<laughs> I hope you saw my earlier video letting you know I was going to be late today. Um, we got caught up at the <clears throat> at the doctor's office. It took longer than I thought, but does it ever go as according to plan? Um, <clears throat> probably not. It doesn't usually. So um, today we're going to be um, working on practicing our what just happened. Um, practicing our stitches. So um, stitching straight stitches and um, just all the different stitches that we've got that you can do with your machine. So this is perfect for beginners. This is really perfect for kiddos. Um, so I'm just going to quickly share this video and then we will get started. Um, while I'm sharing, I would love for you to, hi Stacy, to check in with me. Let me know that you're here. Um, share this video yourself so that you can find it later. Tag a friend who maybe is new to sewing um, so that they can join us. That would be spectacular. Um, for some reason, my internet, just in general, is being really slow. Hi, Kimberly. Um, so I came up with this idea to do some fun. Um, it was all well. Everything was good. Um, to do some fun printable cards. So these are actually designed to be Valentine's Day cards. They're sewing themed. You could actually just print them and use them as is. But, um... I designed them to, um, I don't know why that's not, <clears throat> I designed them to be used as stitch practice, um, and, um, this video will be shorter than the other videos. We're not going to do a project. We're just going to make these, um, um, do these cards. And I didn't, they're, they're different than most stitch cards because, um, they, um, they are, um, they don't have exact directions on them. So it's kind of like, but I wanted to show you how I'm going to use them and how you can use them. You can do kind of whatever you want. So it's great for any other level. Um, so any level of sewing, cause you can do, it's kind of, um, free for all. You can do whatever you want. Sorry. It's, um, I'm not apparently not great at talking and sharing today. I'm almost done. I just got, hi Kim. Um, let me just get out of this stuff now and make sure I got it to all these places. This place. Let me just make sure one more. Um, thanks for, sh for tagging guys. Um, let's see, did it go? This one didn't go through for some reason. One more and then I'll be done. Okay, so let's, okay, and then lastly, um, in the um, description of this video, it's not showing up there, I don't know why, that's okay. In the description of this video, you can find the link to the blog post where you can get the PDF to print off. So um, I'm using, I printed this one really wonky, um, the, so I'm using the one that I printed wonkily, I didn't want to waste paper, um, you'll get the idea. So here's what it is is it's four different cards and I've just cut them apart. I've printed it on cardstock, so not just regular paper. Um, you want it to have a little bit of structure because um, it would just be really hard to do on regular paper um, in your machine. So cardstock, just regular old cardstock from the office supply store, um, works great. And um, there's a few different cards that we've got. And so I want to just start with. Let's start. So what? We'll start, let's talk about thread first before we get started. Um, so for thread, we, I'm going to be using different, um, this is also great practice for threading your machine because you'll change the colors frequently. So what kind of, I wanted to show you is I've got a bunch of these. Um, I'm not using my Cricut today. Um, I could probably, you could make the file so that it, um, you, you're, so, um, Technically, Alicia, you're supposed to change your needle after every project. You're supposed to get a new needle. So, um, yeah, I would definitely, if you, um, if you do this after you do, if you do a whole set of cards, I would change out your needle. If you're just going to do like these four, you're probably fine. Um, but technically you're supposed to change your needle after every project, which I don't do, but maybe should. <laughs> um, so Okay, so what I wanted to talk about is I'm gonna, we're going to be changing out our thread often, and so what I'm going to do 
And what you can do is, I'm just gonna use a white bobbin underneath. So my bobbin thread is white and it's it's just this white and it's this all-purpose Guterman. So you can not, Um, you can not um, change your bobbin if, here's what I wanted to tell you, you don't have to change the bobbin every time, you can use the white as long as it's the same thread. So like this one, I could use the same white because it's the same, it's the same all-purpose um, thread. I wouldn't use it for this because this, you can see how shiny it is, it's a different, it's different, it's not the same. So I wouldn't use the same bobbin. So for this one, I would switch out my bobbin as well. That's just kind of my general rule of thumb. If it's the same brand, same type of thread, then I will use, um, <clears throat> then I will use a different, I can, I'm fine using a different color. And the same with this. I would not use this because this is Aurifil and this is Guterman. So I'm just, I'm not going to mix and match except for within the same exact family, if that makes sense. So, um, so that's that. So what we're going to use, I'm going to, so for this first one, we're going to do this one. We go together like needle and thread. <clears throat> and I think I did flip it so that you should be able to read it. Is that readable to you? Um, let me see. Should be readable. Um, so we're going to start with this one. And this for this one, we're just going to throw in whatever color you want. Because really for this one, I meant you to just go around. The edges. It's not readable because I flipped it. It didn't do what I told. I can flip it really easily. Hold on. Boop. There. Better. Um. Now go away. Go away. There we go. Is that better? <laughs> should be. I guess it didn't take the flip. I think that that should be better. Okay. So. Like I said, this one was, the, my printer was wonky. It didn't, it did a weird scale thing. So the lines aren't all the way around. When you print it, you'll want to make sure that it has these, I've designed it so that it has these lines all the way around. Um, so don't, so this is a do as I say, not as I do, because I'm going to use this one, even though I don't have the lines all the way around, but I want to show you. So this is what it will, it should have the lines all the way like this one. You can see all the way around. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll just throw in, what's happening here? There we go. I'm not going to do white. I'm going to throw in just, I got a bunch of pink, random pink thread. Um, I have a huge thread collection. So if you don't, I've linked in that blog post, my favorite like starter collection of Guterman, little tiny um, spools like this. So you can get a bunch of different colors. Um, so I'm just going to pick a pink or you could pick a different color. It does not have to be pink. You can do whatever color. Um, you you want now Lucy I'm here I just was late today I'm very late so I'm gonna go ahead and go with red for this stitch and if you remember how to set your stitches we just want to go to a straight stitch and um, I always keep mine at the length of the longest length which is four on my machine um, and then Throw your thread in. And for this one, and this is super great for kids because the lines are already on there. So like this, where did I put that one? Like this one, the lines are there all the way around. So just the goal for this is just trace over the lines with, no, this is still my old machine. I haven't taken the plunge yet. I've, uh, it's sitting right here. I just haven't even had the time to look at it. I haven't been feeling that great and then everybody's been, it's been crazy. So the weekends aren't really a great time for me to do any sewing because um, the kiddos are, I'm busy with the kiddos. So I'm just on the line and we're just, I just want you to practice going all the way around. So when you start out, you'll want to go slowly on this straight line. And then once you get going, you'll go a little faster to get all the way around the square. And then practice also getting to that corner exactly. Good morning, Gina. Um, so we're on the corner exactly. What I want you to focus on is make sure the needle's down when you pick up your foot and turn. And then put it back down. 
and then again go straight. And pr the goal is to get faster and faster at this bit while still keeping it straight. I'm just gonna have to fake the line here. Um, since I don't. Since I didn't. Like that. And then you can practice back stitching. And then you'll be all the way around. Just like that. Mine is, I, like I said, messed up because of how I <laughs> printed it off awkwardly. It printed weird, so I had to reprint it, but I wanted to not waste this one. So that's what it looks like. If you are, um, these are also awesome if you want to, if you're do embroidery, this would be a great, um, or you, if the kids want to learn embroidery, you could use, you could use these for embroidery and practice your, your lettering, your script, um, right here. That would be great. Um, you could also practice different, like, you know, um, satin stitching in here and the, um, like, all sorts of different, oh no, still no baby, all sorts of different stitches. So you could practice all your different stitching that way. Um, you could come in here with your machine and fill some in if you're practice. these would be good for practicing your free motion quilting, put your quilting foot on and practice filling in like this, filling in the needle. Um, I mean the thread, just like that. So there's lots of different ways you could use this, but for very beginners, especially the kiddos who are just learning and you just want to practice a straight stitch, I want them to just go around this square that's already drawn on. It already exists, like you can see on this one. The line already exists, just so right over that line and practice getting your corners correct, okay? So that's the goal, that's the plan for this, for this first one. So the needle and thread, that's what I've designed that one to look like. Now, the next one is the You're So Loved that um, that we've done. And I'm just going to keep, I don't want to make you watch me change all the thread, but you can um, change to different colors. That's It's great for practicing threading the machine, getting through all the different steps that you want to do. So I'm now I want to, this one... And you can do this with the other ones too. If you're very comfortable with a straight stitch and want to practice your zigzag stitch, you can do a zigzag. Or if you're very comfortable with zigzag and want to do a straight, you can do straight on any of them. They all have the box around them. It's, the repetition is meant to really enforce those lines. So um, I'm going to switch my machine to a zigzag stitch. And then um, I want you to, the goal for this, using a zigzag, is I want you to, or the kiddos, to practice really straddling the line perfectly. So I want your zigzag to be the same distance from the line on either side all the way. That's the plan for this for this one. So I'm just gonna <clears throat> get it started. And when you are getting started with a zigzag stitch, you wanna really do a few, I like to do a few by hand to see exactly where the needle's gonna fall and make sure um, that I'm on the middle because sometimes you start and it's like way off from where you thought it was going to be so and then just give it a go and try and straddle that line and this is a good time um these are a good time to play with the different stitch lengths of the um of the zigzag because the different lengths make it give it a much different look and this is also important it's a good time to really see those corners and focus on practicing on those corners to see where you're going to be at These are a really good time to just practice with your handwork, practice just lightly, you know, lightly feeding, not, not, um, not um, pushing or pulling, just kind of resting to keep the paper in place. Um, there's lots of things you can be focusing on when you're making these. So that's that one, and like I said, so I won't show, I won't do it on all the rest of them, but I all of them have the square, and so I want you to practice, like here's the one with the, the correct square, not my messed up printing one. All of them have the square around, so that's a place where you should practice each time, practice your stitching, okay? Um, and then one other thing, if you're, if you're wanting more practice, and a good thing to practice is to grab this one again, 
put in another color of thread and use your quarter inch foot to draw your own square exactly a quarter of an inch inside of here. So I'll show you, like that would mean, going back to my straight stitch, I would use this, let me see, come on, I can never get it to show. I would use this side of my foot to line up against the line and practice going perfectly straight all the way around. So that would be another good um, practice to do with these um, with these cards. I'll show you how, what I mean. So line yourself up so that you're a quarter, and it's kind of like an offset, an offset line. But this is good because you're not going to necessarily have a line drawn when you're sewing. You want to know how to measure a quarter of an inch um, when you're sewing a project. This is really good for eyeballing that quarter of an inch. And use your gauge to make sure you're at a quarter of an inch. So I'll show you what I mean for this. Oh, so there's your good then you'd have the lines on the inside too. So that's a good practice to keep it straight when, because you're not ha gonna have it drawn on necessarily when you're working on a project. So that's a good practice. You can do on any of them. So all four of them have that box for you to work on. The next one um, that would that I recommend, so this would be the third one. I recommend doing this one third. And um, I'm not gonna change the thread, but you could change it. And you could use any color really. Um, as long, you're, if you do enough stitching, you're not gonna see that blue coming through. This is, we're gonna practice our circles. So first do your outline, your square, and then we're gonna start here on the circles. And I want you to start right here. Um, it's not every morning, Angela. We are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's usually at 10 a.m. Central Time. I'm behind, I'm late today because of a family doctor appointment, but um, usually Monday, Monday, fr Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 a.m. So, so for this one, I want you to start right here, and then you're just going to start practicing your circles, okay? So you start here, and then go around and around and around and around. I want you to practice circles by lifting the foot and turning, and also practice circles by just letting your machine and helping your machine with your by turning with your hands a bit. I'll show you what I mean. So first, we'll lift and turn. So start here. You want to start here at the beginning of the line. And this is a, and then we will, um, thanks Angela. Then we're just going to start and you can see I'm kind of just, the machine is kind of, I'm not letting it move and then kind of giving it a little turn, just barely with my hands. If it's too much of a curve, you'll want to lift your foot and turn your piece a tiny bit, okay? and then go. And this is just about trying to stay on the lines and practicing those circles. Um, and get as much as you can. So lift and turn and keep going on. And you really don't have to be perfect on the circle. Um, it's just a general idea for you to practice that technique of turning slowly, and you kind of have to slow down your stitches. You can see what it looks like when you lift and turn, what it looks like when you just turn with your hands. Okay, and then you're just gonna go around and around and around. Okay, I got kind of wonky at the end there, crazy. I got a little crazy at the end. So, but that's kind of what we're looking for um, is that, um, a stitch like that just in just practicing your circles you can do it more um, you can see here here's the one I've completed already let's see if I can get you some light on it so you can see the different stitches it does not want to focus come on there we go that's a little better so that's kind of what that's the goal for this one and again like I said go all the way around um, with your machine this is another good one for embroidery practice because this stitch this lettering would be great um, with your embroidery needles and then the last one to kind of put it all together is this one our hearts are stitched together 
Okay, and this will put together, for the hearts, we're gonna put together our straight stitch with that curved stitch that we just practiced, and also the free, free, um, the free drawing kind of, I guess I'm gonna call it, to fill in this heart here that's not necessarily there, but we wanna make sure that both hearts are showing, so I'm gonna just add this part of the heart with my machine by eye. So that's a good place for practicing by eye, the by eye sewing. Um, and so that's the plan for this one, okay? And this one would be fun too, if you're doing embroidery, you could do your French knots in here, two different colors, um, that would be fun. It's got the, the um, stitching, the script, I mean, is the word I'm looking for, that you could practice on. Um, and again, this my lines are all whacked out from printing this one, but the, the lines on yours will go all the way around. <clears throat> and if, if it doesn't seem to be printing right, just scale it down just a tiny bit so it prints the lines all the way. Um, because I, when I scaled it is when it was wonky on mine, but I scaled it, what did I do? I don't remember. So, but you can play with it to print it the right way. So the plan for this is just to go around the hearts. And I used, for the my finished one, I used two different colors of um, thread. So this is a pink and this is a red. But for this one that I'll show you, I'm just going to use the red for both of them. So you can see. So those are my ideas. Um... That's kind of what I had in my head when I created these, but you can totally do whatever you want. Like I didn't want, I wanted it to be something fun that was usable, but also you could play around with any way you wanted. Um, so really you don't even have to stitch them. You could print them and use them for your sewing friends, even if you don't stitch them. But the idea was that they were a fun, easy to do, stitch practice card. So, so I'm lifting and turning, lifting and turning to do my, my hearts. And then, oops, and then I'll just do my other heart as well. And I wanted to do the, um, the free drawing of the heart just because I want them to be stitched together so that there's a spot where the stitching overlaps. So that's why that, um, that's why I'm doing that. Okay, and this would be fun. The kids, I know, love to make their own things and be crafty. So this would be nice. You could print a couple of these off and they can make their own Valentines. Okay. So that's, that's that, that's, and then just trim off your threads. That's kind of, that was my rough talking version, but see here where they're stitched together. That was my original intention and my goal with that one. Um, and then you can, again here, they're stitched together here and we've got the outline all the way around. So it's lots of places for you to really practice your stitching um, and your straight lines and your circles. Yes, you can use whatever thread you want, um, but like I said at the beginning, just make sure that they're the same in the top and bottom or the same brand. Um, oh, I guess this isn't even, this is a sulky. So see, cause this one, so like you wouldn't use, like we've got this shiny pink, but you wouldn't mix the shiny pink with the, um, with the white, this, because this is, this has got rayon and, oh no, it's a hundred percent rayon. And this one is polyester. So you wouldn't want to mix cause it, your machine might not like that. Hi Rita. So, um, as long as you put the same in the top and the bottom, if you put 100% rayon in the top, put 100% rayon in the bottom. If you put 100% poly polyester in the top, put 100% polyester in the bottom. And I also don't like to mix brands, so I wouldn't mix my Sulky and my Guterman. I don't even know, I, I didn't even know I had a Sulky. I thought, I had no idea. <laughs> or a fill and Guterman is what I usually have. Um, like this is 100% cotton, this is 100% polyester. Just don't mix those. You can mix your polyesters, um, like these two, but... Just be careful of that. If you're, especially with this project, since we're re-threading a lot, you want to make sure, like, have the standard. Like I just use this white in the bottom to keep it 
Um, and then the last thing you could do if you are working on your free motion quilting, write your name here in thread at the bottom. You know, do a heart and your name. That would be a great practice for your free motion quilting um, with your quilting stuff on. So, um, yeah, I mean, today's kind of a quick one. I don't actually have a project. This was just um, not like a finished like fabric project. This is a project, I guess. But um, today's a quick one. And then if you are in my sewing school group, you know I've already kind of given them a heads up that on Wednesday we are going to be doing talking all about cutting. So Wednesday we will finally cut some fabric. We so far on um, we've done setting up our machine, getting that all started, the different um, adding threading the bobbin and threading the machine, winding the bobbin, all those sort of things. Um, then we've also talked about the different pre-cuts and different types of fabrics, and we did a very quick, um, simple straight stitch um, project that we just w was just straight lines. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to cut fabric. We're going to go there. We're ready. We'll cut it, and we might talk a little bit about pressing um, and those two things. Um, Yes, this is, these are perfect for teaching kiddos um, and a really fun, you know, you can go to my blog and print this off or just, you know, make your own. Just post a few photos, put a few photos into, you know, into your word processing thing and, and um, print it out. And it's perfect for the kids to trace them with their machine. Um, squares and shapes with lots of straight sides are the best but yes we're gonna do rotary um, we're gonna use our rotary cutter um, we'll talk about using our ruler our straight ruler and our rotary cutter using a cutting mat um, there's we can I might throw in some of our other the other rulers um, like a hexagon or a triangle um, if anybody's interested in that it's all very similar to um, the straight cutting so um, we can just talk about some of the different rulers if you guys are interested on Wednesday we'll do that and we will make a project we'll do something that's um that we've cut with a rotary cutter probably a quilt block just because that's um that's fairly easy once you know how to cut um and do your straight lines which you've just learned it'll be easy to do your um a quilt block so that's the plan um you guys you can find this in the link, the description for the video, there's a link, and um, I've also linked my favorite collection of um, everything, um, lots of different colors of Guterman. So there's a there's a, just like a little starter pack that has, uh, I think it's like 20 some um, colors. So if you're looking to get started with thread, this is my favorite, it comes with lots of colors. It's in the blog post that's in the description of this video. You can also find the PDF to print these off um, and make them. So over there on the blog. So if you have um, a specific quilt block that you're interested in learning how to make, um, you can leave me a picture or if you know the name of it, put it in the comments because um, I think we will do a quilt block on Wednesday and we're really going to focus on cutting, rotary cutter, um, handling the fabric, um, different ways to um, cut it if it's really long because um, that can be intimidating. So let me know if you have questions for cutting, what kind of block you might want to see um, us create and I will be back here on Wednesday on time at 10 o'clock. Oh, pinwheels are fun. I do like those, Tanya. Um, I will be on time 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning, central time. You can turn on notifications, um, for this video <clears throat> in this video to be notified when I'm live next time. Share this to your page so you can find it later. Um, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.